Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8. I am here with my own Atlas V. Yes, I know other people have modeled the Atlas V before, uh, probably lots of other people. And I know there's a Real Skill Boosters Atlas V and the Kiki Launchers Atlas V, but I decided to produce my own Atlas V mainly because of the launch of the Perseverance rover that's going to be coming up. And so I'll try and adapt the NASA 3D model of the Perseverance rover, though that's a little bit tricky because that 3D model is uh, for 3D printing. It's not really for gaming. Uh, otherwise, I may make my own version. Uh, we will see how well that works out. But here we are. Um, I meant to actually put a bump map on this as well. It actually doesn't have one. It looks pretty good for that. Uh, but I had some problems with that, so for now it doesn't have one. Uh, but let me just show you how to put it together, because of course I'm going to link it in the video description. Uh, the uh, I think I've got the engines listed under Atlas V as well. Let's see, yes. Okay, uh, the engines look crappy because, um, frankly, you should use some other RL-10. The RD-180 you can't avoid if you're going to use this bunch, but the RL-10 get from somewhere else maybe. I, I didn't have the heart to make yet another RL-10 when there's like a hundred of those. There's more RL-10s than there are versions of the Atlas V for KSP. But anyway, uh, we start with the Centaur stage, always. Uh, so this is how mine looks. Subtle differences to other versions that are actually deliberate. I didn't actually know where the RCS... it has RC, RCS built in. I don't know where the thrusters are, so the poofs are going to be coming out from from anywhere. And I'll put together the 4 meter one first, and then we'll do the 5 meter one and launch that separately. There's no decoupler at the top. Uh, you have to use a different payload adapter. I didn't make all the payload adapters that it comes with. Um, I might do that later on. That wasn't a high priority. I'll Yeah, so that'll be later on. So the RL-10, I chose sort of an icy texture for it. Um, you can decide whether you like that or not. Uh, again, I would recommend actually using somebody else's RL-10. This is the the 400 series interstage adapter, and this is the first stage tank. Another thing I did not do was make the AJ-60s. That's also a component that a lot of people have made before, and so. I particularly like the KW rocketry ones, but there are other versions of the AJ-60, the SRBs that go on the Atlas V. So yeah, uh, we can quickly put a payload. The Centaur has the probe core and electric charge and all that. I noticed that using Kerbalism and a few other mods, this is a very basic install, uh, but with Kerbalism and a few other mods, it seemed to take up a lot of electric charge, so I'm going to have to look into that. Um, so we're going to have a... my standard payload is Avgas, and I think this has about an 8 ton capacity without boosters. So let's sort of make it about 8 tons. Okay, that should do. And then back to the Atlas V parts. We've got three fairing sizes. The LPF, EPF, and XEPF, which is the tallest. So LPF is like this, EPF is like this, and the XEPF is like this. They're different masses. And I consulted the um, payload user's guide for Atlas V. This was uh, the, the one I've got is from 2010, though, so it's a little bit outdated. But that's what the masses are from. And so, yeah, uh, there are a lot of details that I could continue to work on, but I decided to call it at a certain point as uh, good enough, and then I'll do further refinements later. Uh, for this, I'll do the middle-sized fairing, the EPF, and you have to put one on each side. Technically, the top of the fairing, they're asymmetric. One actually covers the other one. One actually has the entire nose, but I didn't do that, so sorry about that. But that was a detail too far as well. It's all about deciding which details you're going to implement, if you will. So, and again, if I 
see that there is interest in this, I will add more details. I know all the details. The pay payload user's guide is 400 pages long. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not short on details as far as how Atlas V works. Uh, I think I'll have the RCS go as well, because the RCS controls roll on the Centaur stage uh, when it's single, single engine Centaur. I'll make a double engine Centaur one, probably closer to when they finally get CST100 up, or plan to. Uh, well, let's see how it launches. Uh, it's not reading any Delta V down there right now, but it does have it up here. Uh, one thing uh, for when we don't have any boosters, I think they underfuel the upper stage, but got no confirmation of that. Uh, it certainly doesn't need it fully fueled, so we're going to set it to half fuel. It'll be a little bit better that way, and we certainly have enough Delta V. So let's go with a half fuel tank up there. Oh, uh, it's is it filling it up? It's filling it up. Okay, hold on. Let me tell the clamps not to fill it up. Okay, so here's what it looks like from outside. And throttle up. SAS is on. And ignition. We have plumes and launch. So actually the Atlas V 401 is the only launch I've ever, and the carrying Cygnus, I think OA-7, is the only rocket launch I've personally attended. So as you can see, we've got good frame rates and everything. Well, we're not carrying anything particularly complicated. The texture on this is a bit more repetitive than I intended. I might space that out a little bit more so it doesn't look quite as repetitive. It's actually a pretty high resolution texture that I scrunched up a little bit because it seemed to match the... I mean, you can see some of the pock marks there, but anyway. It's not high resolution in game, I mean, it's high resolution in its or original form. So, again, there's a very spare install to make sure that everything is working right without any complicated mods involved. But it is 1.8. Okay, I'm gonna throttle down here. The RD180 does throttle. We do have to leave a fair bit of time to apoapsis for the RL-10 though, even with an underfueled upper stage. It's not quite at half, it's actually 60% fueled. Okay, getting ready for the end of the first stage. G-forces are creeping up, they'll creep up even if I throttle down to the minimum. Okay, separation, and oh, that gave a little bit of a kick. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. It depends on whether we're like pointed through prograde or something. Okay, and you can see we've got a residual roll right now. So we've got the RCS available, activated. So as you can see, the puffs are just sort of coming out of nowhere. I need an actual image to see where they're supposed to be. But fairing up, that's clean enough. And these new procedural tanks with their shiny textures. So this is gonna be a while with the Centaur. Eight minutes still. Boom looks fine at this time warp, but as we do higher time warp, it doesn't look quite as good. Okay, we're getting pretty high up here. But that certainly demonstrates that it can do the lower Earth orbit capacity sort of thing. Alright, so yeah, that's an orbit. It's got some to spare. Again, I didn't put the decoupler on, that'll be extra mass, but we're talking about, well, it won't show the payload separately, but anyway, about 8 tons. And let's try the 5 meter version. So to convert this, we take that off, we delete this, and we don't need the fairing, this fairing anymore. And instead, Atlas V, uh, we want this interstage adapter, which holds on to the Centaur like this. And then on top of the interstage adapter, we need the adapter for the fairings, which is this boat tail. 
and then we can put the first stage on like that. I simplified this a little bit. There's actually a tiny little piece there. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just added that into the weight of this inner stage adapter. And I, I don't have a version without these textures, uh, the logos right now on the Centaur. So we'll just have that be. And uh, we have a choice of three fairings, the long fairing, medium fairing, and short fairing. I'll show each. So this is the short one because it has to contain the entire Centaur. I built in the Ford load reactor into the fairing instead of having it be a separate piece. I'm sure that's controversial or something, but uh, it's simpler that way. Uh, so this is the short fairing, and I don't have hanger extender in here to get an appreciation of that from a distance. Uh, this is the long fairing, uh, sorry, medium fairing, and this is the long fairing. Okay. So we might as well just go whole hog and go with the long fairing. 18.8 .8 tons sounds about right, and we'll put all the boosters. Uh, because I kept everything symmetrical, i will still have these on this side. Okay, so... I'm not... Uh, there are um, AJ-10 decouplers that you can find around specific to the AJ, sorry, not AJ-10, AJ-60 uh, booster decouplers that are available in some mods. I'm just going to use this stock decoupler. And this AJ-60A is from KW Rocketry. I think this should be scooched over a little bit, but if I recall, it is a little bit awkward, so I'll leave it be like this. We're going to call this 551. This time, of course, the fairings have to go before we do the whole centaur stage deal. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let go of all the boosters at the same time. I don't know if they need separatrons or not. We're at 4% 100. We'll see. It will be a test. Okay, so we are fully fueled, and now we have an Atlas V that is in its most obnoxious configuration, or whatever, uh, most impressive configuration, uh, with the largest possible fairing, so ignition. And launch. Got a lot of get up and go here. We will need a lot of time to wap waps this to burn the centaur, but we might as well take advantage of the high thrust weight ratio now. Okay, booster set. Ooh, a little bit tight. Could do with some separatrons or something. Maybe custom decouplers. Hmm. I'm seeing some little black spots appear on the landscape. I don't know why. That's strange. Okay, I'm gonna point as firmly through prograde as possible, throttle down now, because the g-forces are getting high, and separate the fairings. Okay, that's pretty clean. Alright, well, let's see if I've given it enough time. I don't know, four minutes to apoapsis? The Centaur has a burn time of 15 minutes, single engine. Separation. I probably need some separatrons on here. Ignition. Throttle doesn't matter, this doesn't throttle. And we are carrying a very heavy low earth orbit payload. So we will do the upper stage sort of thing to do in this case. Okay, we're now doing the thing where it falls back down. Okay, our vertical speed is once again trending towards zero. That's good. It looks like we're going to end up lopsided, unless I really go up like this. Probably still going to end up lopsided. Okay, but we are in orbit. Admittedly, not the best sort of orbit, but let's shut down there. And that is with the heftiest payload. Well, not quite the heaviest. We're at 18.8 .8 tons with this payload. 
It could go a little bit higher than that, but not too much higher. Uh, with a more optimized trajectory, you could probably do 20 tons. But anyway, so this is the Atlas V. Take it or leave it. I'll put it into the video description. Shouldn't need anything else, to be honest. If you're not using it in Realism overall, I have no idea how it works like in stock, but delete the RO configuration in the folder. And that's that. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.